Hi, this is 9.3 quadratic inverses. Okay, finding the inverse of a quadratic, steps for solving for the inverse of a quadratic. So you're still switching the x and y just like we did with the linear functions. Solve for y, you most likely will take the square root of a function. So just understand that you're going to have a square root probably in your answer. Okay, because the inverse of a quadratic function is a square root. Okay, so we have the quadratic function and the uh, f of f inverse of x is going to be a square root. Okay, they're opposites of each other. And we kind of talked about that when we went over parent functions at the beginning of the year. Okay, determine the restrictions to the domain. So you need to understand that um, if you have a negative inside of the square root, then you get an imaginary number. So your domain restrictions are that if you plug a number in for x and you get a negative value underneath the square root, that those are your restrictions. You can't have that, okay? So that's why when we go from a parabola to what a square root looks like, it looks like half a parabola on its side. Because if we have any of these negative values underneath the um, x-axis, then we would have imaginary numbers, okay? So let's look at some examples. Okay, find the inverse of x for f of x equals x minus 3 squared minus 5. So the first thing we need to do is we need to switch our x and y. So we have x equals y minus 3 squared minus 5. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is add this 5 to the other side. So we have x plus 5 is equal to y minus 3 squared. Okay. Remember, the opposite of each other is squaring something and square rooting something. So if we just take the square root of this whole uh, parenthesis right here, then we're going to be canceling the squared and the, and the root out from each other. But whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So now we have the square root of x plus 5 is equal to y minus 3. Okay, and then our last step is to add this 3. You just need to understand that adding the 3 is not going to go underneath the square root. Okay, so this is our inverse. All right. Okay, and then you need to think about things that would make this, um, you know, have issues that would give us an imaginary number. So if we put one, positive one in here, one plus five is six. So we're going to get a decimal if we take the square root, but we're not going to get a negative, okay? Um, so what numbers would make that? If we put zero in there, that doesn't work. How about uh, negative five? So if we put a negative five in there, we get zero, but we can still get one solution. Remember, we talked about the different solutions that you can get. Um, if you put negative six in there, then negative six plus five would give you the square root of negative one. Okay, and that's where you would start getting imaginary numbers. So your domain would be that you can't have any numbers um, less than negative 5, basically. Okay, so uh, I'm trying to think of which way um, you guys always wrote it. So um, x can't be less than, or it can be less than, or equal to negative 5. Is that right? Okay, so the biggest it can be is negative 5, yeah. So that should be your domain. Okay. Next example. Find the inverse of x for f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 16. So let's switch things around. x now equals 2y squared minus 16. We need to add 16 over here. So x plus 16 is equal to 2y squared. We can then still divide by 2. Okay. So we get x plus 16. Um, actually, let's divide by 2. So we get x over 2. 2 goes in, doesn't go into x. So x over 2, and then 2 does go into 16 eight times. So this is now 8. if it will erase. So 
sorry, that's slow and I'm trying to make work, okay. Equals y squared, okay? Then how do we get rid of the squared? Well, we have to take the square root. So we have to take the square root of this whole side. So we have um, the inverse of x is equal to the square root of x divided by 2 plus 8. Okay? And that's your answer. And then you would have restrictions. You could figure out what's going to give you a negative value underneath the radical. Okay? Let's move on now. Next, we have uh, the inverse of x for f of x equals x plus 1 squared plus 7. So again, we're going to switch. So x equals y plus 1 squared plus 7. Subtract 7. So x minus 7 is equal to y plus 1. And this is all squared. Take the square root. So the square root of x minus 7 is equal to y plus 1. We would then subtract 1. But you need to know that, that that's not going to go underneath the radical. It's outside of the radical. Okay, so we have the f inverse of x is equal to the square root of x minus 7. And I'll put that in parentheses so you know that that's one thing. And then your minus 1 outside. Okay, so that's what it looks like. That's what we're going to be doing. We'll talk more about domains and stuff tomorrow in class. Y'all have a good one.